today, I want to talk about one specific micro four third camera that should deserve way more attention than it has been for the past few years. And this is the Olympus OMD EM1X. This is the Olympus OMD EM1X, the flagship of flagship micro four-third camera that was launched back in February 2019. It gathered quite a bit of attention, but not for its capability, but rather its size. Hi, it's Jimmy Cheng here from Red35 and welcome back to my channel. Yes, today we are looking at this beast of beast of micro four-third camera here because I think this camera really should have deserved a lot more attention from a photographer's point of view, and not so much about critics talking about the size of this camera right here. Because I personally think this is one heck of a lot of camera for your money. You see, back in 2019, well, even up to 2024, now that we know what Michael Forther is, it's always going to be about small size, compact form factor. And the E1X defies all odds, it's gone the complete opposite way. It gives us the biggest ever body. Well, there is several reasons I believe Olympus was thinking at the time. And I also think that Olympus was a little bit, once again, ahead of his time. The reason I say that is because, well, if you look back at the lens lineup across the entire Michael Forsyth RAM, we didn't have any big, heavy, long, massive lenses that we have today. Yes, we may have the 40 to 150 f2.8 Pro, we had the 300 f4 Pro, and perhaps, I'm not entirely sure, but correct me if I'm wrong, the Panasonic Lumix 100 to 400 Panalika lens. Because the Olympus version came just a little bit after that. So, we didn't really have any massive lenses that can, yeah, take advantage of this kind of bodies, to be quite honest. So, I think Olympus was just a little bit too early to launch this body, but more about that in just a second. The EM1X really, really is a massive, massive step up from a professional point of view for stills photographers. Another thing is, well, imagine if the EM1X is launched in 2022 or 23, it would have been a very different story. And I'm not joking because I can see that Olympus or OM system right now and also Panasonic are gunning for the high-end cameras. And the spectrum that they're looking at, the target audience they're now hunting, are the people who are craving for the high-end models, the rugged, the more expensive extreme models. And the EM1X will fit into that category. In particular, OM system now targeting for wildlife and outdoor photography, and they're often holding massive lenses. And all the OM1 users have to add an add-on grip to balance the huge and heavy lenses that they bought. And imagine, this guy is all-in-one and is actually better than some of the newer models. So what bit is better than modern cameras? Well, I'm gonna to come to that in just a second, but let's dial back a little bit. Look back at 2019 when the E1X was first launched. It was way ahead of its time, and I'm not talking about Michael Four Third, but across the entire digital market, because this camera is the first ever digital camera to feature AI subject recognition. Okay, it wasn't perfect, perfect. You know, many of the modern competitors are definitely better in that sense. However, it was the first. So you can imagine that. And also, it really designed for, <laughs> I don't know, World War Three. This body is by far one of the most rugged, well-built body that I have ever, ever used. And I'm not really taking it lightly. I'm a professional photographer. I've taken my camera out in harsh conditions and everywhere. If you ask anybody, any professional amateurs, enthusiasts who handled this camera before would agree and tell you all about it because this guy really is rugged as hell. For instance, the full magnesium body is, is literally a break. And I can't see any, even modern cameras nowadays that I'm touching, the OM1, OM Mark II, and also the G9 Mark II, the GX7 that I'm actually filming on right now, feel as solid as this base here. The actual battery door, the memory card slot, it's all built to the highest standard you can imagine in the professional world. And also, this guy 
for some reason, it has a lot of features that people may not have noticed. For instance, a built-in heatsink to prevent overheating, which I doubted that Michael Fawcett would ever experience because in my, well, almost eight years using Michael Fawcett cameras, I'd never ever experienced any overheating issues. Unlike some of the full-frame cameras that people might have associated with overheating this, like, especially in video terms. So uh, yeah, I doubt it Michael Forth will ever really experience that anyway. So this guy here is actually over-engineered in that sense. So you can see that the e neck is the uh, more like the Formula One car in the car world. So it's kind of had the latest technologies, it's over-engineered to tailor for the highest performance. So you may ask, what exactly are better than 2024 modern digital cameras? Well, first of all, buffer size. This, I have no idea what sort of buffer size it has, but it seems to basically keep shooting non-stop for unlimited time. I can't seem to see slow down. Okay, I'm not talking about like really high-end photography before my kind of use, I, it never seems to run out of space. In contrast, when I was just shooting with the E1 Mark III or the OM1, it does slow down after a few seconds, but this guy will just keep on shooting. And the OM1 Mark II does address the issue, which is a lot better compared to the E1 Mark III and also the OM1. But this guy, like I said, ahead of his time. It has a huge buffer that's tailored for those people who utilize high speed frame rate burst. So that is quite amazing. And he seems like I mentioned earlier. So I suppose this is for those people who just basically have the shutter glue to the finger and keep pressing for like five minutes. So this is something that also contributed to the reliability of this camera, which I can tell you right now, it has not failed me once. Amazing. You know, so many cameras that I've used either going to be have some software crashes or some unreliability issues there, whether it's going to be the EVS forked up or something internally just cocked up and you have to reset the camera by taking the battery out or not, something always going to happen. This guy, nope, is as reliable as an old German tank. Second is autofocus. Yes, you've heard that right. The E1X is actually better than some of the high-end Michael Forsyth cameras we've seen in 2023 and 2024. Yes, despite the five years apart, the E1X is actually better and more reliable, especially for photographers like me, a portrait, street and travel photographer, for instance. One of the reasons is because of the dual processor that it has in its body. Yes, two processor, and one of which is dedicated for auto-focusing tasks. Imagine that. Even though that processor may not be as strong or high performing as modern digital cameras, but given a single processor just dealing with AF, that's a lot of resources dedicated for one and one feature only. And that is pretty cool. So I think when it comes to continuous tracking, face detection, eye detection, this guy is actually better than some of the higher model, even with full frame cameras too. Finally, it has to be the execution and design of the E1X body. Whoever sculpted this body in the design department deserves an applause, a standing ovation. And I'm not joking, it is that good. And I think personally, this is one of the best handling cam of all time. And I have used many, many cameras before, including some old school SLRs, both professional, digital and film cameras. This is definitely one of the best out here when it comes to integrated big body camera. So yeah, I know sensor size wise, this is probably considered as a huge camera for Michael Four Third. However, we are human. We have standard size human hands and you're holding something which is too small, it just never feels too great. I know guys like this, the GM1 is cool, tiny, you know, it's good for traveling, you know, just holding hand like a point and shoot camera. But if you're throwing anything bigger lenses on this, you just can't hold it properly. So if you're a professional and enthusiast who used to use bigger Pro Zoom series, Pro Prime lenses, you will find the E1X an angel to handle. And that's as far as I can go. Anyway, so this is what I can say about the E1X. And I would like to hear your thoughts about uh, uh, your experiences in using the E1X, whether you love it or you hate it. Personally, I really, really love it. Earlier, I said that the E1X was ahead of its time, and I wasn't really joking to capture attention. I already mentioned a couple of technical points, but also can see that, that the E1X was released not 2019, but 2021, 2022, maybe even 2023. It would have been a very different story. Perhaps 
would have been a commercial success more than what it did in 2019. It is because now we have more heavier and longer lenses to use, which will utilize the body design like the EM1X, such as 150-400 Pro lens and also the latest 150-600 Beast. And I'm not joking, those lenses will be perfect on this body. So why would I say that if it's a 2022-23 model, it will be different? Well, consider this. The body is perfect. I can't see anything wrong with this. But at the time, there's a couple of criticism right here. I think that despite having a bigger magnification and larger viewfinders, the resolution remained the same as the standard in one model, which is a little bit of a letdown. Imagine having a bigger television, but not increasing in resolutions. So you see the yeah, dots a little bit clearer. So it's not as high or sharp as it should be. So imagine having the latest E1X resolution in this massive viewfinder. The viewing experience would blow your mind. That would be pretty cool, right? Yeah, I think so anyway. And also, yeah, the um, subject track condition would be a little bit better, you know, matching the old Mark II versions. However, I would still prefer uh, iron face detection in the M1X than the current M1 models. And uh, I just think that for me anyway, at least, it's still more reliable than any of those cameras. So I think, yeah, given the slight update in the viewfinder, this could easily be a 2023-2024 model. So it doesn't need to do much. So perhaps that's another thought for own system. Because personally, I think this is probably a better time for launching this type of high-end professional body for photographers especially aiming for those people who really love burst shootings and like taking cameras to rugged environments such as Antarctica, the desert, the Amazon rainforest and so forth. This will survive without a doubt. Anyway, this is my two cents on the E1X and whether I'm still loving it. The short answer is yes, I'm loving it. And I'm never ever going to part with this camera because it means a lot to me, especially I have used it professionally for three years straight without having to change it. Uh, it was great. It was really one of the greatest camera I've ever used. Um, to be quite honest, also, this camera was marking me joining the Olympus family as an ambassador at the time. So yeah, I think emotionally it stands a lot for me. But that's my story. What's yours? Thank you very much for watching and if you want to stay in touch with all things photography and listen to me talking a little bit more about older Olympus Michael Forza cameras or cameras in general, please give me a thumb and also subscribe to the channel. Until next time, I'll see you all very soon. Peace out. Hi, welcome to the bonus sections. What do you think about today's video? Do you like the M1X? Do you use one? Do you own one? Or had you own one and sold it afterward and why? Because I would love to hear your thoughts about this particular camera right here. I personally really, really enjoy using this camera. And although that these I don't really use it uh, for photography usage, I actually use it for my uh, streaming camera. You know, LD live stream, you see me and Rod doing it. This is the primary camera that I use behind the scene. So uh, all these streaming functions being utilized through this. And as I said, the AF is amazing. And I really say that because the live stream that you saw, all the continued focus tracking when I hold the product in front of it is all through here. It's just nice and smooth and quick and accurate. I don't see the same performance like in some of the more mo uh, newer model, the OM1 and the, even the G9 Mark II. So this really was something that a lot of people ha may have missed to talk about and also experience because most reviewers would talk about this camera when it was first launched. And uh, this is five years on. Five years on, I'm still raving about this camera. And even many people ask me about what camera should I use if I'm this and that. Sometime, depending on the type of photography they do, I would still recommend if you can get hold of a good copy of M1X, go for this camera because it is a capable camera that would never ever fail you. So yeah, that's my thought. I really would like to hear from yours. Um, yeah, over the time, I'm gonna talk a little bit about other camera models in the Olympus lineup and even this guy here, which I still haven't reviewed because uh, I have owned this camera a few years now, the G1, uh, which I actually like for a different kind of uh, uh, feeling, you know, nothing to do with professional shooting. It's a fun camera 
for fun use. Uh, anyway, uh, stay tuned for that. And uh, if you want to listen to me talk about more micro force camera or camera in general, yes, you know what to do. Anyway, uh, I'll leave you to it. Stay creative. It's feeling a little bit cold now, finally. I think that summer definitely have disappeared and winter is on the horizon. As you can see, I'm really wearing a jacket. It's a little bit overcast today. Uh, nothing I can do about it now. Weather is weather, time of the year. Anyway, I'll speak to you all very soon and I'll <laughs> I'll see you next time. Bye for now.